crispy. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Figure the Nation. And today I bring to you a project that I actually finished probably nine, ten months ago. Uh, one of those weird situations where uh, I was contacted by someone who was interested in an office type dial, but like for, you know, a gangster dude, for somebody who has a, a hidden safe and, and hidden guns and weapons. <clears throat> so he had asked me, you know, he asked me if I was interested in creating something like that. And, I, you know, I, I always love uh, stuff that is a little bit different. Um, and I, I always love trying to figure out how to create dioramas where I'm hiding certain things. Uh, so I definitely took on it. My goal was to have, this was, this is my third video. My goal was to have three videos in a week, you know, because a lot of times I kind of jip you guys and I give you guys, you know, two videos a month. If that is why my, what supposedly my analytics say. So I said, you know what, let me see if I can uh, rock out some more videos. Let's see. Let me, let me, my own personal goal. I'm just going to see if I can do more videos, you know, in terms of anything that's style related. So, um, I wanted to, to, my plan was to uh, upload this on Saturday. Today's Thursday. Today's Thursday, and uh, on Monday, and to be specific, Thursday, January 27th, on Monday, I had surgery for um, a kidney stone that I had been fighting for almost three months. So finally, it was time. This kidney stone was not going to pass on its own, so I had to get surgery. So I did that on Monday. Very strange. Never had surgery in my life. You knock out, you wake up, it's over. But I am now uh, dealing with some of the after effects of that. And the recovery is not the greatest in the world. Been in a little bit of pain. But I'm going to be all right. Uh, so I, I, the plan was that I had taken uh, the week off. So I, surgery was Monday. So I was going to go back to work Saturday. But we're also expecting a snowstorm. So I believe they may cancel work. So I may, I may not be able to upload this, excuse me, upload this till Tuesday. Uh, but whatever, it's a new video, it's a, it's a new dial. So I was contacted, took on the gig, um, and wanted to try to make it uh, as dope as I possibly could. So let's discuss some of the materials used and how I went about it. And we'll go from left to right. So the, the walls are just scrap of paper. These vents are just printed vents. Uh, the door is a thick uh black cardstock that i think is perfect for doors anytime you're working with foam there's always going to be some dents here and there so if i was to make that door just a foam door or just you know paint the foam it'll never look good in an office so that's just a tip that's why generally i'll use balsa wood as a door i'll use stock uh paper or thick stock paper just because it's just never really going to work any other way unless it's an outdoor uh, outside door where you're gonna get dents regardless uh, this is the same fastener that I use that I've uh, bought from Michaels uh, these two pieces of art are just um, small canvases and what I did is I, I framed them out with uh, blue painters tape then I took uh, three different shades of green two different shades of green and a black and then what I did is I watered down the paint and I kind of gave them like the splash so you you put um, you know you put the paint on on the brush and you kind of do one of those and it just kind of does the splashing and the purpose the reason for the colors I mean I went with abstract art because I thought it would look good uh, it matches well with the circular um, kind of the circle the little circles you have there in the wall uh, and also um, wanted to match the color to the floor as this green was uh, not a matching green. So I figured to give it that symmetry, let me kind of do that, the colors of the floor, and then the black kind of brought it all together. So this, a lot of this comes from my experience as just a graffiti artist and color blocking and just pleasing to the eye. You know, you, you want to create things that aren't too loud, that, that the eye, that is smooth for the eye to take in and just kind of be comfortable with with what it's seeing is it's probably the best way to explain it um the window is a plastic that i buy at um, i'm just reaching for it here is a plastic that i buy at hobby lobby and it's only a dollar 29 and it's a pretty big size and what i like about it is it has plastic on both sides so it won't be scratched up you know I, i'll install it and or, or size it out and by the time i install it then i'll peel off the plastic and you'll get perfect non-scratch glass you know which is which is great for the reflection and obviously it's it's you know in these situations it's tough because you got to get everything kind of accurate as, as accurate as possible because anything will be an eyesore because everything has to kind of be you know set up a certain way so it's always difficult you know i think a lot of times people may feel like the the outdoor dials where it's bricks and so forth 
are are um, are easier uh, than these or more difficult or whatever the 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 idea is. I always find these a little more difficult because you kind of have to be exact. You can't drop the ball too much on what you're doing here. Uh, so the window is a uh, uh, balsa wood or the frame of the window is a uh, basswood actually. So all around. And then the corners here also, I think, uh, yes, that's basswood as well, as is the frame here. Uh, the floor, this is a piece of, pe I guess, prefab uh, dollhouse flooring. This was part of a bin that a friend of mine gave me a couple years ago that she located at a, at a place. Um, I forgot the name of the place, but the people brought in stuff and... and for charity and then that place sold it so somebody brought a whole bunch of dollhouse stuff and this is one of the things that was in there was the floor it was probably about that long and i just took that piece put it here uh this is just a piece of um foam sheet but this particular particular piece uh has the adhesive in the back so uh i didn't want it to bubble up in any anyway so i used this piece with the adhesive and then i took my little brick and i kind of beat it up so it kind of gives it uh the look of a rug Let's see what else. All right, I think that is it in terms of the outside. Let's check out what's behind this artwork. So let's go to this side first. So here, what I did is I have this, and I'm gonna send it to the person who buys this, because uh, I I think I'm, I'm I put it up for sale. I someone already offered to buy it. So by the time this video is out, it'll probably be gone already. But this little plastic thing is great. Could it yeah, here's great to to this, and then it doesn't uh, rip the paper. And so I'll add some of these so when they wear out, he can just kind of redo them. Because if you don't have that sticky, that sticky, this little sticky thing, it kind of doesn't close all the way. This is a safe that I got at a dollar store at some point. And uh, it was a bank, so kids would put their coins in there. And then I was able to kind of, uh, oh, actually, you know what? There's, um, let me see here. There's also, I put a little section in the back. I'll turn off the light. Let me see real quick and so i put a little hole there on the safe where you, where the where you, in the past you'd be able to put the coins or whatever and so now you can light it up um and kind of give it a different effect so that's just cash uh this was actually this cash was created by uh the homie snez fernandez who does amazing props that's just this necklace i have no idea where i got that necklace from but, but uh pretty much that's um what it looks like with the light there so i wanted to give it a, a different effect so when you open it up you can kind of light the inside as it's obviously going to be dark because uh it's kind of inside uh so the safe uh the little latch here broke at some point so there's no need for a combination it just opens and closes, and you can just do that and boom that's hidden and then for this um same deal it has a little little you know sticky tab there you open it up and then it's just uh um i've used this before in terms of creating kind of a weapons a hidden weapons area where i usually use just um mesh but this mesh is actually a little bit smaller than the normal mesh i used the the squares are a little tinier and i use the same black paper to kind of wrap it in the background and on the base there and also has a little area for the light i'm not going to reach back there now but you can shine a light through it uh this closes as well and uh yeah that's pretty much it these weapons that are in here are actually um real cool man <laughs> these are the the pack that uh mesco pack that came out a little while ago and then they started after it was out for a bit they were selling them two for 20 bucks so that included like all these weapons plus like dude, it was crazy like more bombs some handcuffs uh had a baseball bat a sledgehammer a machete looks like and then all of these things that are inside of here including like uh, katanas here on the side uh pump shotgun that i think actually works um so yeah uh that was a pretty cool pack to have so it's perfect for this type of a uh, dial uh oh been ready to measure this guy and it is approximately 16 inches across it is actually 10 inches I, if i remember correctly this is when let me see it's it's, yes, 10 inches tall. I remember thinking back at this point that I was going to make all dials 10 inches. <laughs> and I never did that. I still make them 12 inches tall. And it is uh, 11 inches deep. Uh, the way it comes apart is uh, this section comes off. It's magnetized as always. And this section comes off as well. And boom, everything's off. Easy to ship, easy to store, so forth and so on. 
I also I'll, uh, leave some pictures at the end of this video. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, but this was definitely a fun project. Um, and I wish it, it. I wish that the owner or the original person who got it um, would have ended up turning up because I was excited to give it to him, and um, I know he was excited to receive it. So, if uh, in this situation, what I do is if he ever, let's say, I sell this and three days, <laughs> three days later, he's like, "Yo, bro, I'm here." Uh, I'll remake him something. I can't make this again because I try not to duplicate duplicate any uh, any dials unless they're recreated from a particular scene. But I will create something for him that's similar. And um, if, you know, if this guy ever hits me up, so um, let's let's hope uh, that he's okay and that hopefully uh, I'll get somewhere to. I y'all, and I'm out of here. Peace.